All right, so if you've been watching my videos here on YouTube, you know I'm at the very beginning of the ball python breeding season. So I just paired up my males and females a few days ago. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my males over to the next set of females and show you how that goes. It'll be pretty interesting. I kind of show you my technique of how I take the males out of one female's tub and put them over into the next tub. And essentially what I do is I, I have the schedule that I made up. It's, it's pretty much the rotation of the males and the females it's kind of a generic timeline, not really specific dates. And I have them paired up for three days and then move them to the next females three days later. And as a matter of fact, it's actually been five days that those males have been in the females. They got a little bit busy and it's perfectly fine with ball pythons to leave them in there a little bit longer. No problem at all. You really want to cycle the males through probably two or three females and then give them a break for at least two to three weeks to feed them and, and pretty much give them a break from the rotation until you go back and pair them up again and you pretty much pair them up every two to three weeks pretty much you know some people say just once a month is fine and you keep pairing them up once a month until the females start ovulating in about five or six months and it's, it's kind of interesting you get into the breeding season and most of the snakes will go off food the males and the females will stop eating for months at a time it's pretty amazing and the problem is here is I have all these rat racks and I start producing all all this excess of rats essentially what I really need to do is go through and start pulling my males separating the males and the female rats so they don't breed in the off season because I definitely don't need that many rats during the breeding season so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over and move some males through my females all right, so this is my setup here. Essentially what I do is I check my list and I see I wanna move this male banana anchi clown from this clown female over to the lesser clown over here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll actually peek in the lesser clown and take a look at this girl. And you can definitely see she needs some fresh water. So we'll just kind of empty the water here. We'll give her some fresh water. Make sure everything is nice and fresh. It looks like she needs a little bit of spot cleaning. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get in here and spot clean this and kind of wipe the sides down with some disinfectant real quick. So this is as real as it gets. I'm showing you everything, dirty tubs and cleaning and everything. Essentially what I do is I take some diluted F10 solution and I put it on a paper towel and I just kind of, if, if they make a mess on the sides, I just kind of wipe it down with this. And usually what I'll do is, Pretty much every month I go through and change all the substrate and do a really deep clean and then in the meantime I just go through and kind of spot clean. And then the next thing I want to do, I'll show you all my stuff over here. I kind of have this cute little water can and I like to go through, I actually like to water the snake and everything. This is like room temperature water and if you kind of get the snake wet a little bit, it kind of snaps them out of any kind of a feeding mode, kind of gets them out of any, it's weird to kind of, you know, uh, some people say it actually stimulates the breeding mode but, uh, actually putting water on the snake so take a look at this these guys are probably not locked together here so these guys <laughs> let's see if I can get the male out so this is a really small male this is his first time breeding he might not breed this first cycle because he's pretty small and I'm just gonna put him right on top of the female and then what I like to do is I like to sprinkle just a little bit of water <laughs> right on the male to kind of get them in the mood which is kind of a trick I've seen a lot of people do this is my banana anchi clown male with my lesser clown female both are visual clowns it'd be really awesome if these guys would actually breed and then what I do is I'll come back here to the clown this clown that I just pull them out and I'll do a little spot cleaning. You see, I really like to just kind of change the water. I just dump the water and I use a brand new deli cup, one of these little deli cups. Really easy just to pop them in and you don't have to worry about, I actually, believe it or not, I actually hire someone to clean these cups. I have this uh, 18 year old that goes through and cleans all my cups, saves me a lot of money and they actually make a little money too. It's, it's, it's a pretty awesome setup. And then I just go through and give a little water and that is essentially how I spot clean if there's any you know manure or poop or anything in there I go and remove that and then if there's any mess on the side I'll wipe that down but it looks like this one's really clean so I'll move on to the next thing 
All right, so I want to move my fire pied over to this pinstripe pied, and she's, I'd say, she's pretty much on the edge of being able to breed. It's gonna be pretty close. I'm gonna just dump the water real quick and get a new water for this girl. Put that in there, and let me get a little bit of water here. And you can see there's a shed in there, but she didn't go to the bathroom, so I like to actually leave the sheds right in there because they say it kind of stimulates the male. <laughs> I like to kind of drench them a little bit with water. And this coconut husk will definitely soak up all the water, so you don't have to worry about them really standing in water. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my fire pied with my pied. Another thing I wanna do is I wanna move these, these labels. And this one, let's see, these are, looks like, these guys are together, but um, their their tails are not locked together, which is kind of interesting. So what you have to do is you just kind of have to pull them apart a little bit here in the dark. You can kind of see uh, uh, the tails were close, but not together. So you definitely don't want to pull them apart, that's for sure. And then I want to just move the fire pied right over to... The pinstripe pie, just pretty much as simple as that. This guy is going into shed too a little bit. He's starting to turn pink a little bit. And that is pretty much it. That is as easy as it is right there. You just move one snake over to the other one. All right, so here is the next one. I'm actually gonna move my coral glow from down there up here with my pinstripe. And these tubs right here, you can definitely tell this is a little bit different of a setup. This one is definitely dry quite a bit drier it's it's amazing these dry out a little bit more so i add a little bit more water and the water bowls in these are actually not really deli cups so you have to pull the water out and these you actually have to kind of scrub them down a little bit with the f10 and then rinse them and then this i want to clean up the mess in the back and get this one ready to put the coral glow in all right, so I added some fresh water, added a little more moisture to this coconut husk. It was really super dry, and I cleaned it up a little bit, did a little spot cleaning. I'm gonna come down here to my core glow. You definitely don't wanna separate them if they're in a lock, and I'm thinking after, after, after five days, these guys will not be in a lock. Definitely not in a lock. You can see I need to spot clean this one, clean the water, add a little more moisture to the substrate. But what I like to do is I like to take the male, put it right on the female to kind of get them in the mood and then spritz them with a little bit more water. <laughs> kind of kind of wakes them up and gets them in the mood. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, so I was looking back at my schedule and I accidentally messed up on this one. This one was supposed to be in here from the first and to stay in here the whole week. I'm actually pairing up my male scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino with this big old girl. Look at how big she is. This is probably one of my biggest ball pythons. And I definitely don't want her in kind of a feeding mode. <laughs> you can see she's kind of in a feeding mode. Oh, she's a little freaked out. And I actually just made up some new water from the tap. And you definitely want the tap water to be pretty much as neutral in temperature as possible. So you don't have to worry about, you know, being too hot or too cold. And this is my, my scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino male that I should have paired up at the beginning. And uh, my schedule is a little bit messed up to where I, I actually put this in at the last part of the week. It should have been in there for the whole complete entire week. But look at the size difference on these two. It's pretty amazing. That little tiny male with that huge female. And believe it or not, they will actually breed. And I've, I've actually paired up snakes smaller than this male with this big old female and they laid eggs. What I'm shooting for on this one is the scaleless head visual caramel albino. Hopefully I'll hit it in the hatchlings and there's a 50% chance that the male is uh, het caramel albino 50% chance he's not so I may get a whole clutch of normal looking snakes and I may get some caramel albinos depending on if he's actually het or not but that's a pretty exciting pairing 
All right, so here's another pair of snakes. Actually, I just swapped out the water on this one and I cleaned the female above. And I like to just add a little bit of water every time I go in these tubs because it is so dry here in Colorado. Everything gets dried out really bad. And this blue-eyed leucistic is actually a bamboo lesser. So everything this breeds with, half the babies will be bamboo, half will be lesser. And I'm just gonna move it from that tub up to this tub from one normal to another. Pretty much just looking for producing more bamboos and more lessers. Now what I'm gonna do, just kind of spritz them just a little bit with water. That, for some reason, it seems like it gets them in the mood. So here is a neat trick for getting a stuck shed off a snake. This is my pastel calico female. And what I wanna breed with her is this male up here. This is my male pastel desert ghost. Desert ghost is recessive, so we'll get all hets out of this pair. We'll get, hopefully we'll get like a super pastel calico het desert ghost, which would be kind of the crown jewel of this pairing. Really beautiful snakes. I'm just gonna kind of throw them there and give them a little extra water here. And the female is running away out of the tub here. Let's keep them in the tub. That's gonna be a really awesome pair. All right, so here's a really another awesome pair. This is my albino pied. I'm crossing it with my bumblebee female. The bumblebee is pretty close to being right on the edge as far as weight. She's been a pretty picky eater. She's pretty much an only live. And, and this, this albino pied went out food for quite a long time. But it doesn't really matter for a male. He's back on food now. He's been doing really well. And I want to pair him up here with an albino. So all these babies will be albinos, 100% het pied. I actually have a, a, a female that's albino, het pied, but it's not up to weight this year, unfortunately. So this is a pretty awesome pr pairing here. And I actually went through, changed all the uh, the water in here and add moisture to the substrate. It was kind of dry. I definitely like to keep the humidity up. And what I really like to do is I actually really want to add a little bit of water on top of all of them when I pair them up. Kind of just snaps them out of whatever mood they're in. It's kind of interesting. All right, so take a look at this beauty. This is my male calico bamboo, and he's in here with my pastel female. I'm gonna move him over to this big old lemon blast. Look at how big this lemon blast is. Really huge snake. She will definitely lay a really big clutch of eggs this year. So this is, essentially, this is a four gene combo. It's the bamboo calico and the pastel pinstripe. So I'm hoping for the four gene combo as the crown jewel from this pairing. So here's the last pair of snakes that I'm pairing up. These are my reticulated pythons. This is Lucy, the one, the big one right here in front. She is a white albino, 50% Jampea dwarf from the island of Jampea. And then Sunny is the purple albino up on top. He is part super dwarf. And I'm gonna leave these guys paired up for a little bit longer. As a matter of fact, it took them probably five days. Well, I think, they, I think it was like on the fourth day I saw some copulation for the very first time. The tails were locked on these two so I'm really excited hoping to get a clutch of eggs from Lucy this year all right so it is time for the question of the day and Mike Elbaz asks how do you keep your snakes warm during a reptile show? And that is a very good question. Essentially what I do is I use the heat mats that are really kind of like a paper thin heat mat and I plug them into, I don't know what Bobby's doing here. I plug them into a heat controller, like a VE100 or a Herbstat or something like that. And then I take the heat probe and tape it directly to the heat mat. And I can pretty much set it to any temperature I want. And what I actually did is I went over to Reptile Basic style you can buy it pretty much any length and any width that you want and you can have them cut to size and they will even attach the electrical cord which is kind of nice and I had them perfectly fit to all my display cases I have three heat strips basically what I do is I plug them into a power strip plug the power strip into the heat controller like a herb stat and then put the probe from the heat controller directly to one of the heat strips I tape it to the heat strip and I set it at 90 degrees and my snakes are really happy and warm during a show. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people come up and they look at my snakes and they're like, man, you have the most chilled out snakes of any in the whole reptile show. And then when they hold my snakes, you know, they're actually a 90 degree snake, nice and warm. And they're just so cuddly and warm. They just kind of sit there and don't even move during the whole show. It's pretty awesome. 
So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.